We usually start the process just after Halloween and carry on until either there's none left on the streets or until Mr. Debenham tells us to stop. And the first step's persuading the poor fellows through the door, of course, but, well, a guard comes down and their hopes come up once the surviving Spice Girls have switched on the local lights. Once they're inside the facility, it's simply a matter of following the process. We sit them down in a big, comfortable chair, very similar to the one they'll have once they're in the grotto. And then we begin phase one. The phrase we most commonly hear at this point is, uh, oh, I haven't seen this much food in ages. And so they guzzle it, every morsel, very swiftly. Uh, one recruit last year didn't even bother with the silver, bless him, just, uh, just picked up the plate and tipped the whole lot down his gob. Once they've eaten their fill, we give them another, piping hot, not a second between seconds. Now, there does tend to be a little waver at that point, but they do always eat the second one voluntarily. They do usually refuse the third one at first. Well, not refuse, per se. They, um, they ask if they can take it away with them. <laughs> they haven't realized yet. So we explain to them that either they eat it now or they can't have it at all. That usually does the trick. The phrase we most commonly hear at that point is, I couldn't eat like this every day. <laughs> but they can. We just haven't proven it to them yet. It's after their third helping that we offer them the contract. Room and board, more money than the big issue can offer and for far less work. And the second they've agreed to every uh, clause, well, then the festive season can begin. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why don't we just hire actors? Surely they're even more desperate for work than homeless people. Well, that is true. We have a government mandate to fulfill, getting the people who really need it the most back into work. And that mandate doesn't really stretch to the arts. Check it. In any case, we pride ourselves on authenticity. Think about the children, for crying out loud. They'll know if it's an actor behind the beard. And when they find out he's not real, it breaks their little hearts. I have seen it happen. Check it again! Confusion. Betrayal. They can't understand why their parents lied to them for so many years. What else were they lying about? How many strangers' laps were they deceived into sitting on? It's for those children, your children, children across the country, that I founded this facility, because for their sakes, it's not enough for them to believe he's Santa. Santa has to believe it, too. Ho, 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 ho. The whole process usually takes three to four weeks, depending on their resilience. Once they're good and ready, we ship them off to grottos up and down the country. The most authentic Santas money can buy. And as for the most common phrase we hear at that point, well, I'm sure you can guess what that is. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thank you. Come December 27th, mind you, they have, of course, fulfilled their contractual obligations, and so we simply release them from their employment and 
put them back where they were in the first place. We do give them their pay, of course, and uh, a little bottle of sherry as a parting gift. Outside the festive season, they do begin to uh, wilt. But the uh, excess weight and leftover turkey can usually sustain them until February at least. Of course, many of them aren't really sure what to do with themselves for the rest of the year. I, I saw one recruit last July trying to give passing school children a Christmas present that he'd made out of an old shoe and some vomit, presumably his own. Then summer passes, of course. The leaves turn to brown and then fall. And then it's Halloween again. We usually start the process just after Halloween. And carry on until either there's none left on the streets. Or until Mr. Debenham tells us to stop.